Okay, I'm gonna make a quick tutorial about how to use um, auto hotkey. I just think it's so cool. So um, I made a hotkey to uh, minimize Anki and Chrome. And uh, this is an old auto hotkey. So it's called auto hotkey, which um, it is. But um, but I think that um, you can do a lot more with it. You can do mouse clicks. You can do um, basically anything you want. <laughs> it's very powerful. Version of keyboard maestro for PCs only. If you want to do this on a Mac, you have to get keyboard maestro, which I can make a tutorial for. But I'm starting to really like my uh, video uh, streaming software, so I may not do that. Um, let's get rid of any conversations I'm having. Okay. <laughs> um, so what's more is I have almost the, the app here. Um, and so um, let's see. I'm going to really quickly um, go to, um, this is a uh, script editor that you'll need. You'll also need to download, um, you need to download autokey.com. You'll need to download this. And uh, I'll give you some options here to download the current version. Once you've done that, you need to download, um, I just learned how to do this today, so obviously it's showing up. Um, but you'll need to um, get the Psy TG4 AutoHotKey uh, script editor. And um, I got that from this here. Ooh, that was the script. Um, I can put in the description of the video, I can put a link to um, the script editor because the script editor is going to be just nice and clean. You can press this button here and it'll tell you which window, um, the information for the window that you're using. So for instance, for Anki, um, my name is user one, that's my username. And so um, if I were to grab this title, then when I went to my script, I could use it. So I made a script for my left key on my on Anki to elicit the space bar. Um, this is just to make it so that I can one-handed, really easily one-handed um, jump through um, uh, all of my Anki commands. So for instance, um, I have uh, M3 is here. Anki is, I mean, AutoHotKey is asking me, whether it's asking my computer whether or not Anki is active. Because it's active, when I press the left key, it will hit the space bar. And the left key is on my right side. I can use my right hand, and I can hit the left key, the left arrow key, and it'll hit the space bar. Um, so what we're going to do today is just really quickly, just because I have to do it anyway, but um, is write up a um, script for causing the down arrow to hit the one key, which would tell Anki that I see says short key one, key one. Um, right now, the space bar would uh, effectively say that I, I knew the card or that you know uh, that it was good. In other words, I understood the material, but it took me a while to come up with it. That's that's a short, short key two. And so if I hit the left arrow key, it'll automatically hit the space bar, which is equivalent to hitting the number two. Um, um, so the reason I want the left key to be spacebar is I can get from the prompt, which is the front of the card, the spacebar, spar, and I can, I can make the card good as the spacebar. So it's, a, it's kind of a, if you're jumping through the cards and you want to say that they're good and not see them for 10 minutes, you can do that and just hit, you know, left key over and over and over again. Um, if I want the, so what I'm going to do is program two different Anki um, hotkeys. I'm going to make the up arrow easy, meaning I did really well, and the down arrow again, which means I did really badly um, and didn't know what was on the back of the card. So this, we're going to save this. Um, we're going to make a new script actually. So I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to write it, I'm going to try to write it from scratch. We'll see how that goes. Um, this is my first day. So. Um, bear with me, but um, first we're going to do single instance. You want to do this because otherwise your hockey will not um, will not um, wind up uh, being accessible for use after you've used it once. So it'll just assume that you don't want to do it again. Um, it turns out I'm not capable enough to do this um, without uh, seeing what I have done in the past. So let's open up a new script and I'll explain what this is, what's going on. So you want to do you know number single instance. You want to hit force. Basically, I'm going through what it says at the top, but at the speed of somebody who is um, new. So you want to hit comma before you, you type force. It'll actually get, it'll prompt you to do the right thing. See how it says force is one of the options. And so you hit enter, that should work. So then number, and this is this is basically, it says if when active, right? So it's going to act, it's going to be if when active, meaning if the window is active, then it will do this command. And what I've done is if you go to Anki, you can look at this window here. Now, if I hit window A on my uh, PC, it will freeze these this information from this window. Whenever I'm in front of that window, it will use the information that was most recently window A freezed. Um, and so, and so that information can be used um, here. So, so the way that I've got to this active window is I click this button here, and then I went to Anki. Now, if I hit Window A, it'll freeze the information that's here. See, this is the title of the window. This is a class, which is a subclass of the title. This is the actual like program that's being used. So, um, so let's use the title here, copy and uh, paste. And then, if I hit Enter, um, if I hit Enter, I need to hit Tab, and then type in the arrow that I want. So let's let's say we're going to do the easy one. This is up. And that, this is, because I'm doing double colon here, that means I'm going to be creating a hotkey, meaning that when I type the up arrow, it's going to do a command, and that command is going to be the um, number three. And so then I'm going to hit, um, then I'm going to write return, and this is just um, completing the cycle where on a single instance I want it to start up, and on a single instance I want it to come back and have the script open for later use. And so the return needs to be there. Um, then I'm going to hit, I'm always going to add something, and it's usually the same thing for me. I don't know if this is effective. Um, auto key um, nomenclature <laughs> is like the cleanest way to do this, but I always do the kill button is the same for all of the things that I'm doing. Um, um, so. So just in case it gets wildly out of control, you can do that. So now I can, because I retyped this, I can hit save. And usually there's some kind of typo or some kind of weirdness. So um, let's call this up arrow Anki. Um, or let's do what we did before. Anki up arrow key. We're going to save. So let's try it out and see if it works. So first we have to run the script. So let's go to our scripts. Let's open it up. Remember to open it up before you test it, or you're not testing it because the script isn't running. And I'm going to hit the up arrow. And see, that's told my computer that um, I thought that card was easy. And that's, that's effective. So it turns out you can write this. I'm going to try to write the next one just to reiterate. So what am I going to do? I'm going to hit S for single instance, then comma force. Then we're going to go to when, if, when uh, active. 
and then we're going to go with win active comma, um, and we're going to we have the same thing ready. Then we're going to hit um, um, yeah down because it makes it a hotkey. Then we're going to add um, the number one, right, which um, corresponds to not knowing card. Then we're going to hit return. I think. <laughs> Let me see. Um, I'm going to copy this and let's go to the other one and see. No, that was good. That was good. Okay. So let's do that. And um, then in order to K kill the program, just in case it gets wiped out of control, we're going to have to pause. So let's save that as um, Anki down arrow key. And so all of my Ankis will be saved at the keystroke that it is um, that is being pressed and not the command that it is doing. I think that makes more sense because if you save it as the thing that you're pressing and not the thing that you're doing, then um, you'll know what will happen when a key is pressed. You want that over knowing what will happen once. Um, you want to be able to search something on the basis of what you're pressing and not on the basis of what it's doing because if you're searching on the basis of what it's doing, um, you may forget how it was written and it may be ambiguous and so you're trying to look for all of your files eventually, but you can always identify what a key is doing when you press it. You don't want to lose track of what a key is doing when you press it. That's, that will become very annoying very quickly. So let's run the script, see if it works yet again. So here's the down arrow. We're running that. You can even command shift and run them all at the same time. Okay, and then we go back. So I say left, which is space. I say I want to see this card again because I didn't know the sulfatize inhibit the fusion of white cells and phagosomes. And that's the thing in tuberculosis that allows it to be alive and flourish in the lungs. So I get down and look at that. So look at how my red number changes. So it went from 39 to 40. See, see, 40. We're going back to the card previously. I press space to see the answer. And that's basically the equivalent of the, of the space bar, which is my left arrow. I press left arrow and then I'm going to press down key and see how I went to 40 cards that I didn't know. That's because my hotkey's working. So that's just a cool little tutorial that took way too long, but you can speed up to two times speed.